how about we just stay on Facebook Live, okay? Um, if this is not your jam, then you don't have to feel bad for not hanging around. But uh, today, a lot of people were asking how to start seats and how we start our seats. They were interested in seeing our uh, um, the process that we use and uh, what we have done before. And I can show you certain things that we do. We started seed blocking or soil blocking, which is the process of creating containers out of your soil so that we don't have to buy extra containers. And this is not, I'm gonna tell you right now, even though we have something growing out of it, this is not a proper soil block. So I'm gonna show you how to make a proper soil block if you're interested in doing something like that. Hey Lisa, if you're interested in doing something like that, but overall, this is what, that's why it's not a proper soil block because it doesn't stay together well. It'll, it'll stick together, don't worry about it. We'll still get the tomato plant but you create your container from your from your soil. And this is a tomato plant. Um, once you start growing uh, for a long amount of time, you will be able to identify your plants by the, the seeds, um, by the leaves, even though these are not true leaves yet. Uh, this is the first leaf that pops up after they've germinated. Um, and after a while, two more will come up and those will be what we call true leaves but I'm getting ahead of myself, okay? So, in the house full of nickels, we like to play in dirt in the house. And it's fun and it's calming. Um, and it's something that I never ever thought that I would have been able to do as a passion project, but here we are. Uh, I also didn't think that I would be told to stay home and do things like read and nap regularly. Um, which are goals and here we are yet they don't seem as fun as when everybody else is gone so we decided to go ahead and do what we're supposed to do instead of sleeping the quarantine away and that means that we are starting our seeds for our farm uh, there are many reasons to go about it this way First of all, if you have a large amount of space and you need to start your seeds quickly, this is a way to do it um, and, and then not have to buy massive amounts of containers. Oh, yay, the sprouts are coming up. That's great, Samantha. Um, so you don't have to buy containers because what you will see in big box stores and there's nothing wrong with these i don't want anybody thinking that they there is anything wrong with planting in these but this is what you will typically see and this is what we started out with when we uh first started with our garden the thing is um buying enough of these to fill 32 raised beds or 36 i don't know how many we have any longer 36 raised beds with some of those square feet of gardening space needing 16 of these, it got pricey. And, you know, we want to make sure that the money that we raise or that's donated or that's gifted to us um, or that's granted to us from our grant writing is used properly. And it isn't used properly when we spend too much on containers for seed starting. So we decided to go ahead and um, do what is called soil blocking. And soil blocking is the process of making little squares of soil from soil blockers like this. So this one is a small one. Um, they're about half an inch large by half an inch, half an inch by half an inch. And you'll see the dibbles in there. Um, this makes 20 soil blocks. And then when the seeds are germinated enough, we will create blocks out of this one, um, except we will switch out the dibbles here with square dibbles so that we can put the soil blocks from these into these, okay? Um, this process allows the roots to uh, properly grow without being um, um, 
blocked by containers. And, you know, if you go to Home Depot or you go to uh, Lowe's or Menards or any of the, the big time um, garden centers, you'll notice that a lot of your seeds are already in containers that possibly look like this. And what happens is you'll find that roots come out the bottom, right? Because they're searching for that, that water. And they're also searching for space to move because what roots want to do, spray it, okay? And being in containers like this keeps them from, from spread, okay? Um, it is not a bad thing. Once again, I don't want you to go and chuck everything because these things can actually be kind of pricey if you're not, if you're not uh, invested in, in soil blocking uh, right away. So if you're close to the farm and you want to come out when the, <laughs> when the quarantine is list, lifted, we can show you how to do this and you can see if this is something that you all automatically, you know, you want to do. But these aren't, <coughs> these aren't the largest sizes. Those are the two. So they nest. This one goes into this one. And then this one goes into... This big guy. <laughs> so these are great for your... And you'll see the square dibble. So that square dibble is the same size as this one. So then this block can nest into the top of this block. And they're... They're fun to play around with. Um, it's a, it's an investment, especially especially this one. But if you are game for creating your own seed starting mix and starting uh, maybe hundreds of seeds at one time, then this is something for you. And it's therapeutic. So I'll show you. This is a simple recipe. And by simple, I mean farming simple, guys. Not, not simple like you have everything sitting in your house. Simple. Um, it is simple to put together and one batch, if you do one batch, it will fit into a massive tote, one of the longer totes that we tend to pack our children up into when, or all of their stuff, not them. When we pack all of their stuff for college, uh, those, those plastic totes like the hefty or whatever totes that they use, Rubbermaid, the, the largest ones, the longest, largest ones, it'll make enough soil to fit into that and then you can use it as as necessary but this is a mixture of garden soil compost um something called green sand which is something that helps uh keep water in the soil block so you're not watering as often because you uh we all know water destroys um good old-fashioned mud pies when they dry perlite um bone meal blood meal and lime and they're is uh and not not lime that you can buy to get rid of things this is gardening lime this is a a, a food safe gardening lime that you would yes a 64 quart tote sarah that's perfect that is the uh, the correct size um if i weren't scared of moving my camera around so you all could see the disarray in my kitchen i would show it to you i might be able to do it we'll see but um what happens is you mix all of that together uh, oh, and peat moss. You, you'll need brown peat moss. And you mix all of that together uh, thoroughly. Um, the perlite are, and I'm pretty sure if you are a plant mama, you've seen perlite before because it's always in the plant soil um, when you go and buy them. These are little bits of, uh, they almost look like rocks, but they're super soft. Um, this keeps your soil aerated so that the roots don't have to fight too hard to break the soil um, uh, apart. Yeah, not not simple as in <laughs> as in we can whip it up, um, but everything should be readily available at your garden center, so you shouldn't have to search too hard. If not, uh, Amazon has all of these. Obviously, don't use Amazon right now, but any garden center that you go to should have them. And um, the, the bags of everything are not massive at all, except for uh, your garden soil. I'm walking around, sorry. And I'm looking for bags of things. Oh, here they are. I, 
cannot pick the lime up because the lime is a 50 pound bag. That was the smallest bag that I could find at the time. Uh, so I don't have a smaller bag than that. Garden soil, you can use soil from your actual garden. Um, you have to dig it up. That's exercise. Um, or you can buy garden soil, not topsoil. You don't want topsoil. You want gardening soil. Bone meal, which is a source of phosphorus and calcium. So these are all soil amenders that, that are going in here. And this is what gives your seeds proper nutrients as they're growing. And then blood meal, which is a source of nitrogen, which a lot of plants need, especially green leafy vegetables, okay? And then green sand. And it is not what you think, but it looks like what you think it would. Um, and it's a natural fertilizer. And then lime, garden lime, the perlite, the garden soil, and compost. You can use, um, if you have chickens, I know a lot of you all do have chickens. You cannot use straight chicken poop. The, the poop has to cure into compost. And that takes about six weeks for chicken poop to cure. So you cannot put chicken coop, uh, poop directly into the soil. Okay. And the reason that I talked so much was to let allow the water to kind of get into this. Um, if you have issues with getting your hands dirty, I'm not sure why you garden in the first place, but you can put on some gloves and get in there. If not, you can get a spoon that you deem unusable any longer when cooking and mix it up, or you can take your hands and get right in there. Okay. So you need a flat surface in order to make this because what's going to happen is you're going to take your squares and you're going to press right down into it. And you don't want to point uh, press on the uh, plunger because that depresses the soil. Now, if you have your mixture just right, you'll get soil and everything. If not, what you'll have to do is take some of the soil and possibly put it in there properly. Okay? Now, I will tell you the smaller one is harder, the hardest to work with because the soil blocks are so small. So if you're patient with yourself, and that's the, that's the mantra of the, of the year, huh? The year of March that we're having. If you're um, patient with yourself, you'll be able to get it. So we'll sit that down and I'll get the tray that we're going to put them in. Okay, so here's a tray, and this is a propagation tray, which means that they have holes in the top, and then we put it in a tray that we can um, take this out of, put water in here, and then put these back so that we're not watering over the top of our blocks because, remember, we are attempting to keep the blocks intact, and you do not want to water, pour water directly over mud, okay? That's, that's what we're trying not to do. So let's see if we can get this. And ta-da, okay. So I know you can't see the divots as well as I can, but they're little spaces, they're little uh, concave spaces in there. And all you have to do is drop a seed. Now, obviously these are not large enough. Remember they're half an inch by half an inch. These are not large enough to plant your larger seeds such as uh, your melon seeds or any of your um, squash or cucumber seeds. Those are not, they're just not large enough. So that's when this guy comes in handy, okay? And a good um, rule of thumb is to have a bowl of warm water around. So after you do depress your, your soil blocks, you can rinse it so you don't get um, dried, dried soil in there. But this one, is one that we can use definitely for and you want to make sure that you're getting the soil in there pretty well who knew playing with mud would be so amazing okay and then 
We bring another tray over. And if you do it this properly, you get four perfect divots, okay? Now, remember I told you that the small, the small ones are going to go in these squares, but you're probably wondering why they have circles instead of the squares. That's because those divots in there are interchangeable. And this size is the only size that has interchangeable divots. So you can snap them out. You see it's no longer there. Hopefully I didn't lose it, hold on. They come out. And then I can replace it with a um, square, square divot, okay? This is something that you should actually be patient with doing. Um, it's something that if you are that type of person, it can be soothing for sure uh, because it's um, repetitive and then you can go and pl place seat by seat. So this size is, per is perfect for your zucchini, um, pumpkins, any of the melons that you want to plant. Anything that has a large seed base, but things like tomato plants, uh, greens, um, uh, onions, super small things, all of the big stuff that you expect not to have a super small seed probably will go into this size seed maker, okay? Those are your collard greens, your mustard greens, your turnip greens, your radishes, uh, your Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, onions, leeks, every small thing that grows into a massive leafy vegetable is probably going to have a seed that you can't believe. And if you don't believe me, here are collard greens that we're going to plant because those are the things that people come through and request most often. And those are the seeds. And those seeds will fit into the divot of those very small seed blocks, soil blocks. Okay? Now, you want to see the big gun, I'm pretty sure. So let's get this soil block out. Let's see if we can get enough to fill that big one. Now, you want to make sure that when you're making these, uh, you don't want your soil even with your soil blocker. You want it to have to go in because it needs to displace all of the soil that you created. I might be having too much fun with this one. Okay. So, because we're not planting anything in this one right now, I can go ahead and show you. You want a flat surface when you go when you go through to let this out. You're going to depress it, which means that your block is going to come up, and you kind of just shake. Ooh, and let's hope it stays together. And it does! Yay! And I won't be able to use it now. <laughs> but because we did this the right way and the recipe for the soil is proper, what will happen is once this is um, rooted enough, I will be able to place this soil block into this one, okay? And technically right now, I can plant something in there um, and it'll be just fine. So this will probably end up being a tomato plant because tomato plants, their root system is crazy. So this will be something that I can um, make sure that the root system of my tomato plant is healthy and strong and that we get a plant that when I, when I go and trans, uh, plant it outside on the farm, it will do well and it, will suffer, uh, it won't suffer from transplant shock like, like uh, plants that you have to take out of containers like this. Right? Because remember, when you're taking it out of the container, you're turning it over and you're shaking it. Some people may squeeze it a little bit to loosen up the soil in there. And then they're shaking it and then, you know, they take it out and then um, you'll see that it's root bound, which means that 
they've been in this container so long that the roots have started circling the container. And then you'll see nothing but roots on the side of the soil that it's been growing in and it suffers. Now, you'll be able to save them. We've done it before uh, by immediately watering after transplant um, or making sure that when you go and take them out that you're being as gentle as possible. But let's face it, most of us, I'll use us so I can include myself and not hurt any feelings. Most of us tend to be impatient when it comes to doing things and we don't take the time that's necessary. This helps you be able to take the time. Now, with these, my gardening pros who already know, you're still going to have to harden off your plants. And if you've never grown anything before or started seeds in the house, hardening off is essentially getting your uh, plant used to being outside and to the elements and to the wind and, you know, being outside when it's a little bit cooler. And you want to start your hardening off about seven days before you're about to transplant. And you want to leave them out outside uh, the first day, maybe an hour, up to two, and then just increase it by hour um, until they're able to stay outside overnight, okay? Uh, obviously, you want to be able to read your um, seed packet to know if your plants can take a frost. These can, okay? These can take a frost. You know what can't take a frost? at all and a frost will probably kill them before they start even um, performing. Tomatoes cannot take a frost. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're reading your, your seed packets. If you're not a part of the We Sow We Grow gardening chat, you should be because we just showed a video, we just recorded a video on how to read uh, the seed packet. And maybe some people think that's funny, but a lot of people don't know. They just get the, the packet, they plant the seed, and then they're like, okay, perform for me, right? Grow, grow. But this is a perfect way um, to start seeds if you're a little bit more invested uh, in starting things and making sure that the root system is, is strong. It's also a great way to get your children involved in, in gardening because they really do like pressing mud into these and then uh, doing the nesting style Boxes. And these are the only three sizes that um, soil blockers come in. There, there are no other sizes at all. This is the only one that has an interchangeable dibble. And dibble is a, a real word. <laughs> a dibble is an instrument or a tool that you use in order to make a, a hole in the soil. And this one has dibbles that are already in, but they snap in. So you can see, you can see that. They snap in and then these will snap out to put a square dibble um, into the uh, block when you make it. So then you can place these in that square block. Okay, any questions? I'm going through. Thank you, Sarah, for posting the link. I'm gonna go through the... Okay, so Lisa, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to feel like what you just called yourself for buying a seed starting kit from the store. It is not, there's nothing wrong with that, depending on what, what you're, what you're growing. Um, this is for, this is for people who are going to continue to grow because these are an investment. Okay. This one right here is about $30. Uh, this one is about 35 and this one, I don't even want to tell you all, uh, how much it costs, but because we run a farm, we tend to do this this way so that we can ensure that we're getting enough seeds started to, to make sure that our farm is fully um, planted. Uh, this is not necessary. You can stop with the with the two the two by two. You can stop and then plant directly from two by twos. But when you want a really good soil or root system, the larger block is necessary because those are good for, like I said, your tomato plants, um, any of the melons that you want to do, uh, and this can be used for any seed, even though on the backs of seed packets. They will tell you to sow directly for a lot of things. But because you're not in um, a container, you can actually sow directly into this and then plant it directly outside. A fun little experiment that we're probably going to end up doing um, to see how long we stay on quarantine uh, would be planting <laughs> planting radishes into the, the two by two block. 
and then seeing them actually grow because they're root vegetables. So growing and kind of destroying the block as, as it goes, um, as it goes. Uh, that's something that we want to do. I don't know if my kids will think it is, it's as cool as I do, but who knows? They're going to do it because I said so. Um, let's see any more questions. It's not Naila simple. <laughs> I will drop a link. Hold on. Let me get on because I'm recording on the cell phone. And we will make this public so you can share it with friends who may not be uh, connected to me. Um, we're going to make it public and then I will drop the link to everything that I've used so that you all can purchase if you want to. And I don't see any more questions at all. Let me see. And I will post the link. I'm working on um, the link. I'm going to actually take pictures of these because uh, now I have no excuse not to have all of my gardening content up on House Full of Nickels. So these are going to get photographed. We will have the recipe, the soil recipe in that post, as well as links to all of the tools that I use. Um, I guess this is a good time to also let you know that even though this is my passion, I still make affiliate income by connecting you all to certain things via Amazon or other spaces that I use. So I got some of these from Johnny Seed, some from Amazon, and then others from Garden Supply. This tote is actually a soil, soil block making. It's a seed starting tote. This also came from Johnny Seeds as well. And I am on my kitchen table and I have not gotten any dirt or mud on the table so far when using this. Um, the propagation trays also came from Johnny Seeds. You can buy them at your local gardening uh, center. No problem at all. And then we are going to, um, I don't know what the next one will be, the next video series that will be, but I'll try to do a gardening clinic uh, every week. If I can go live every night, I will, because this is something that I love doing. And you all are keeping me on task with what we have to do for the farm. Uh, and since we can't go out, but we're also going to show you all how to compost too. So I'm gathering up enough kitchen scraps <laughs> before I show you how to compost. Cause it would be really, really boring if we don't have anything to put in the compost bin. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all that, uh, I have to share any other questions before I before I leave if not keep sewing and growing guys uh, thanks for hanging out with me this evening and I will see you later bye bye